Um, you have done a lot of research in free radical biology, reactive oxygen species. Um, this is a fascinating area that you know covers a lot of, of ground in terms of maybe exercise and disease, but can we talk about maybe just what free radicals are and sort of their main role in biology? Yeah, so, um, so first of all, there's free radicals and reactive oxygen are different. Yes, I was going to ask you and that. And overlapping. I'd ask you to uh, differentiate the two because yeah. they're probably used incorrectly, yeah. interchangeably they, often. They are. Um, it really isn't a problem, but it is probably important to know that. Um, a free radical, by definition, is, a, uh, is an atom that has an unpaired electron. Uh, so it, it's very reactive and a reactive oxygen is a reactive um, form of oxygen or or similar substance that um, reacts a lot but doesn't have a free radical um, probably a reactive oxygen is much more important biologically but most reactive oxygen comes from superoxide which is a free radical so <laughs> what do you do um, you know, I think they're used interchangeably, and it's not really a problem. But technically, it's it's a good thing to get somebody on their qualifying exam, for example. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> um, but other I'm, than that, I'm taking notes. Yeah. Right, other than that, it's not maybe not so important to distinguish those. Um, the one thing that's different is that you, 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 it's really hard. These are most of them very short lived, so it's very hard to prove that you have a free radical. And you have to use, you know, electron paramagnetic resonance or something like that. And that's impossible, almost impossible to do in, in a real animal. So, I, you know, it's just very difficult to work in that area. I have tried, but struggled. Um, so the interesting thing is that, like our mitochondria operate on free radicals. I mean, they create radicals in, in order to pass electrons. And so, you know ubiquinone becomes a radical and you get a big EPR signal from ubiquinone when when you you know look at an exercising muscle people said that's evidence of free radical well <laughs> yeah but it's just an electron carrier you know um, so uh, the, it's a normal part of life in biology and so it's always there um, what I don't really work in that area anymore and I, I the reason is, first of all, I, I, I had several NIH grants and things on, you know, free radical biology and trying to measure it and things like that. And, um, I came to the conclusion that it's always there. It's, you know, it, it, it changes how much it's there. But like any stress you induce on a cell, like hypoxia we found it, which is crazy, right? You're getting rid of oxygen, but you're seeing reactive oxygen. Yeah. So, but it's there. Uh, you know, anytime the cell has any kind of stress, heat, causes a ton of reactive oxygen to be produced. Um, uh, just almost any stress you can think of, stretch of a muscle causes reactive oxygen to be produced. Contraction makes it, um, you know, the cell divides it makes reactive, you know. And, and I sort of got to the point where like, so what? You know, it's supposed to be there. And then we did this study where we gave, we actually gave artificial hydrogen peroxide, really low, I think pretty physiologic levels, below what you could actually measure. And we saw that um, uh, it was affecting protein function, you know, in, in a really predictable way. Mm -hmm. So you have kinases and phosphatases that are probably the primary post-translational signaling systems that cells use to solve problems, right? And so it ends up that those those enzymes are incredibly sensitive to reactive oxygen. So basically, um, you when you when you give reactive oxygen, you stimulate uh, kinases and you shut down, uh, you know, phosphatases. So what happens is you activate that kinase system and you inhibit you get rid of the inhibitor of the kinase system. So basically, anytime the cell has to make a decision, from my viewpoint, anytime it's stressed, and osmotic stress does the same thing, heat stress, 
cold stress, metabolic stress, you know, it produces reactive oxygen species. And what it does is it, it locally, and they're always local mm -hmm. because they don't last long, they have antioxidant system to constantly, but if, it, if, it, if there's a local production of reactive oxygen, it allows the kinases to emerge and do their thing. And right. They, and then when they go away, the phosphatases come back and they turn it off. So to me, that was one of the coolest things I ever studied, you know. And all, essentially, if you look at overall phosphatase activity, that's what we did, just crazy physiology study, which biochemists hate. You know, there's hundreds of phosphatases, you know. I mean, it's like it's, like its own language. And the total phosphatase activity is plummets when you give it just a little bit of hydrogen peroxide. So I realized that I, what do I do with this? You know, I don't even know where to start. It's like, it's going to be there. I know mm -hmm. I, I can measure oxygen. I can measure reactive oxygen anytime you want. I can show it. it's there, you know? <laughs> right. But what does it mean? I mean, it means that the system is responding the way it should respond. Right. So these are almost reactive oxygen species are almost serving as a signal for the body to adapt. So they're activating exactly these right. kinases, then that's obviously, you know, eventually going to lead to gene transcription for whatever adaptation you want to happen in the cell, whether that's yep. a response to heat, response to cold, response to contraction, whatever. So yep. they're basically, I mean, they're basically the most basic like signaling molecule yep. in the body, essentially. And, and it's, you know, it's, it's cool. It's incredibly cool. cool because the kinases that get activated are still going to be responding to some other environmental stimulus. So they're, they're specific. But once they get started, this is going to boost them and they're going to react faster. And they're going to be decay slower. And they're going to be local. And it's like, God, it's, it's the perfect system. <laughs>